This is now go live number two. Sorry, guys. I tried to go live a second ago, and all of a sudden, everything just went, doo -doo 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 -doo, and everything came down. So when you guys come on, please say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. I am Cheryl with JJ Bean Designs. You are watching me one of three, four places. So you're either on the Junction 71 page, you're on JJ Bean Designs page, you're in Creative Connections group, or you're on my YouTube. One of the two, one of those, so you're actually watching. But when you guys come on, please say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. If you're watching locally, you know that you know me from Junction 71, and I am in Hollis, New Hampshire. Let me know where you're watching from and what the weather was like. Today it was kind of rainy, off and on, doing its own weird thing. So, what are we going to do tonight? We're going to have some fun. So, we've decided that I'm going to be coming live on the Junction page every other Sunday. So, it'll be like the first and the third Sunday of every month. And I'm going to teach some painting and some techniques. And I want you to know, just because I'm teaching now doesn't mean that you can't reach out to me if you have questions. So, but we want to start teaching you guys how to use the different products that we offer over there. So, first of all, let me check my thing right here. If you guys come on, please somebody say hello so that I can make sure the comments are working. There we go. Hey, Teresa. Good. Somebody's on. All right. So, the first thing that I'm going to go over with you guys is uh, what we're going to do tonight. So, I've already started by prepping our furniture, which I'm going to go into more detail about how I prepped it. And then I put the first coat on this page, this piece right here. And what I used is the new fall colors from Dixie Belle. If you guys haven't seen them, they're really cool. Unfortunately, we only have three of the colors that are going to be in stock over at Junction and only locally at Junction. Um, and it is a small limited quantity. They sold out so fast it was hard to even get them. So this green right here that you see is actually Juniper. Look how pretty that is, right? So we're going to be using that. Yes, Teresa, I love them too. The other one we have on here is called Latte. Isn't that beautiful? That's what you see in the front and the top right here. And then the last one that we have that we're going to be having there is Merlot. Now, all of our stuff comes in from Dixie Bell on Monday. We open up on Wednesday and they'll be there for you. There's very limited quantities of each. So it's going to be like first come, first serve, get in the door and get them out, right? Hey, Heather. The other thing that we're going to be going over tonight, um, if you love those fall colors, just to let you know, Brush by Brandy made this awesome thing right here. It's actually a color recipe, so you can make these colors because they're not going to be carrying them anymore. Heather, isn't that a beautiful green? Um, I actually mixed the, another one, like the Juniper, and I added a little bit of antebellum blue to it, and it really did what it needs to do. Hey, Jackie, how are you? The other thing we're going to do is... We're going to decoupage this little beauty here. Do you see that? It's called All Aboard. Look at how beautiful that train is. I'm actually going to take this out of the package and show you just how big this is. So we have a large size is what you get with your decoupage packs. Then we have our companion piece, which is right here. And then you get a small of the same one. We're going to use two smalls on the front of these um, in order to do this. But I want you to see just how large the main image is. It's crazy. If you guys didn't know this, hey, Nancy, we carry Grace on Design decoupage packs at Junction. And guess what? I just ordered a ton more. They're going to be in this week, and they'll be ready for you guys on Wednesday when we open. So look at this beauty. I'm going to stand up to show you this because it's so big. I have to show you guys. Look how beautiful that is, right? Now, this one, my partner in crime over there, over at Junction, she's going to be taking this beauty and doing something with it. And we are going to work with this small one. All right, let me roll this deck up because I do not want to ruin it. And I'll show you what we're going to be doing. Oh, did I forget to mention as well, when you get a Grace on Design uh, pack, thank you, Jackie, and they're packs because everything with Grace on Design HP comes in packs. It's the craziest thing. You get a surf prep sanding pad, which is really cool. You can use that to help with your decoupage or anything else that you're doing. All right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you guys this. I've already cut this. This is the size of the small of that print. This is the print in full, so you guys can see it. We're going to put that right on here. Look how pretty. That's going to look really pretty on here, right? But then this is the companion paper. And if you guys remember, I did a table with this on the top of it. Hey, Jerry. I did a table with this on the top of it, and it literally there were people waiting at the door to grab the table when I brought it over to the store. So this is adorable, right? And then this, again, we're going to take it and we're going to put this on the top of this over here. 
and it's going to be so that, oh, thanks, Teresa. It's going to be so it'll overhang, but I'm going to show you guys why I want to overhang it and how we're going to do it. And we're going to have a lot of fun with this. Oh, Jackie, I love the clock too. Actually, all of these papers, um, this is just one of the designs. There's so many different designs. So if you can make it into Junction or you can go over to um, my website and you can order them from there as well. I have everything up in the description, by the way, if you're wondering where everything is. Um, unless you're watching on uh, YouTube and then I believe it's down in the description. Everybody else is up, YouTube's down. All right, so first let's start. So what I did to prep this, so guys, when you're painting your furniture, the most important thing that you can do, believe it or not, it's not even how you paint, it's not what color you paint, it's not even what you use. What's important is prepping. It's so important to prep your furniture. So when I get my furniture, the first thing that I do is I actually remove all the drawers. That's like the first thing that I do, right? I want to check out the drawers. Jackie, that's great. I'll look forward to seeing you in the store. So this, watch, I, I painted this one shut, so I got to pull it from here. Let me grab my handy dandy drawer opener. That would be the back of a paintbrush. Come on, you baby. All right, so I pull the drawers. I pull them out. See how I pulled that out? And the first thing I do is I clean all inside. I vacuum inside of it. I have a nice little uh, vacuum system here. And then I wipe them all down and clean them. If there's any type of smell, or if you notice there might be some dark stains that may possibly have smell in the future, I do use an odor blocker inside of it. And I use Dixie Bell's Boss. I tend to use the clear on the inside because I like the wood to be able to show through, but it blocks those smells out so that I can keep on painting. So that's the first thing I do. Then I put my drawers back in, and I'm actually gonna pop this one out so that it's not stuck. There we go. Yeah, I don't know if you know that, but that's how you actually get your drawers loose. You just whack the crap out of them. All right, so then I pull, I put the drawers back in, and then I use white lightning. I have the white lightning over here, so of course, the minute I get online, I don't have it sitting over here. So white lightning is, um, we carry it over at the store and on the website. Hey, Jill, hey, girl, hey. So white lightning is actually a powder that you mix inside of water. So it's two, um, two teaspoons to a gallon of water. And I actually use it in a spray bottle, um, which oh, that I have right here. So I mix it up in a spray bottle. I got the spray bottle at the dollar store and I keep it all mixed up. You just use hot water at first so that it actually dissolves it, makes a good solution. And I do wear gloves when I use it because it is TSP and you don't want the chemicals on your hands that will cause yuckiness. So I spray it all over. I use a Brillo sponge and I scrub it really, really good. And then I take water and I rinse that off. It's really important that you rinse the white lightning off because it does have a chemical to it and it will stop your paint from adhering. You get these little cracks and different things that happen in them. I've actually left it on there. I learned from experience. You have to rinse it really, really well. So then once that's rinsed off, I dry it really good. And if it needs, say that it's a dark wood and I'm putting this light color on, I would absolutely put a primer down first. I would use a stain blocking primer, which I use Boss as well. So I tend to use the white actually um, when I'm doing the block. And you can use clear, but I tend to use the white. And they now have a gray too, so I use the gray as well. And I put that on just to make sure that it blocks any of the stains from coming through. This actually, this wood was pretty good. I did lacquer the top of it because um, it had a different feel to it and I didn't want to use the boss. I kind of wanted to use a nice lacquer for it. So lacquer is a good option for you. And then after you prime it, then you can start painting, right? All right, so tools of the trade when you're painting, absolutely important. Let me get you my tools. These are my go-to brushes. I use the Dixie Bell Oval Medium. I do use Chalk Pro and Zebra brushes as well, but I tend to go to these more than that. I use the Zebras actually when I use my top coats because they have such a fine filament to them. I love how it does the top coats. All right, and then I use my Oval. Um, it's the Oval Small. And these, I just used them earlier so you can see them. My other Oval Small and then this is some Dixie Belle Mini. So those are my go-to brushes, but then my ultimate go-to guys, if you do not have one of these, I'm telling you what, you're missing out. Do you see this brush? Isn't this amazing? You know what this does? This blends my paints. It blends them really, really nice. We're not gonna blend tonight, but I will on one of the next lives show you guys how to blend with this thing. Um, actually, we may. 
if we can decoupage this on and I can get it on, we can actually blend that in and I'll show you guys how to do it. This brush is the go-to. It is, look, you can see the chalk coming. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's like, it's like, whoo, it's like a dust in the wind. So that's the chalk paint coming off of there. All right. So without further ado, let's start some decoupaging. If you guys have any questions, make sure you shoot them in the comments and I will go ahead and answer them for you. What I'm using to decoupage with, by the way, is Dixie Belle gloss. I take all of my top coats and I put them in these containers. I get them on Amazon. They're so much easier to use your top coats. I put my paints like that. Look, here's my paints. I use little ones for my paints. That way I'm not dipping into my paints. I'm not contaminating them. I'm just keeping them where they need to be nice and fresh. So we're going to use just a little bit of top coat. I'm going to put that in here. Can you guys see? I don't really have a lot. And I love these containers. They're my go-to as well. I have a lot of go-to stuff. A lot of go-to stuff, right? And then the next thing I just spilled it. Of course I did. Let me put some more in here because I just spilled it right where we're working. All right, here we go. The other thing that I use when I decoupage, I use this glue tool. Can you guys see that? It's actually called the Smooth Operator, and we will have them available soon on my website and in-store. It's called the Smooth Operator. What do you think about that thing, right? It's got the felt on the bottom. It does have the edges on the top, but the felt helps you to put on your decoupage really nicely. It gets into the crevices. Some people don't prefer this. I do. Some people do their um, decoupage wet method a different way. I'm going to show you the way I decoupage with the wet method. I'm going to clean this uh, little spill that I did first just to make sure I don't get it on my stuff here. All right. So when we go to decoupage guys, see this right here? You only want to do a small bit at a time. Patience is a virtue when you're decoupaging. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to take a little bit of this tape and you'll see, I only have one coat on this thing and there's a reason you're going to want to start your paint, then put your decoupage on, and then finish with your second coat. And the reason is you're gonna have to blend that in anyway, so you might as well just get that in. And whatever you're decoupaging, I tend to use light behind my stuff because I want those vibrant colors to come out. If you use a dark color, it could mute the print. You don't want it to mute the print. You want it to come on there nice where you need it to be. All right, so I'm gonna start just by kind of placing it where I want it. And I'm only gonna start with the top first. I'm gonna get the top in here exactly where I want it not even hold on guys i gotta get in front of the camera for two seconds please forgive me just want to make sure it's even because if i don't get it even i will be mad at myself all right so the first thing i do is i actually tape it on and then i start getting going i flip this thing up once the tape's on i flip it up and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take my synthetic chalk brush I tend to use these quite a bit. I'm actually going to start carrying these at the store, guys. But meanwhile, you can get them in any of the links up above. I love these things. They're a godsend. If I do anything extra with them and I forget them, I'm not ruining my big brushes. And I am literally can just throw it out because they're so cheap. I'm going to take my top coat and I'm just going to put it on in an even coat right on here. It's all the way to the edge because I want to make sure that I have enough on here. Some people use Mod Podge to decoupage with. Um, they'll use other top coats. I prefer the Dixie Belle gloss because it is a thinner top coat. You want to have a thin top coat when you're using the method that I'm showing you because if you have too thick of a top coat, it actually will not adhere correctly. I may stand up for this. If you all of a sudden see my overalls and not me, that's why. I think it's more important for you guys to see what I'm doing and not one at me in particular. All right, so I'm going to hold this up. I have a continuous mist sprayer right here. And yes, we have those in the store as well. This thing is going to be your lifesaver painting and decoupaging. I am just lightly misting my paper. I'm not soaking it. I'm just lightly misting it. Very important. Do not soak your paper. It will tear. We don't want torn paper, right? And then I'm going to take this. I'm going to hold it out. And I'm just going to come down just like this. I'm going to go over here. Can you guys see it dripping? It came over the top of it and it's actually coming down the front. 
I'm going to go into this groove right here because I want it to be continuous on my piece. I do not want it. I want it to come and do this little center aisles too, right? So I'm holding it and I'm just taking it and bringing it into here. And I'm not doing that because I didn't put any in here. Let me go. Here we go. Now I'm going to take this. I'm going to bring that. I use my fingers too, guys. If I feel like I'm not getting what I want out of it, I will tend to use my fingers. Now we're going to come down to this next part. And you can see that this is where it actually meets up. And you have your next line of grooves, as I put it, right? Next line of grooves. So I put this. And then let it come down so we don't pull it away from where we already were. That's the next line of grooves right here in the drawer, right? Then I'm going to go to the next part. You're only going to do a small portion at a time. If you do too much, there's a good chance you could actually wrinkle it. You could tear it. You don't want to do any of that stuff. We just want to put this paper on nice. I'm going to lightly spray again. All right, why am I lightly spraying it? Because when your decoupage actually wrinkles, it's actually the paper taking in the moisture and that's what makes it wrinkle. So I'm gonna take this up here. Now, is this a completely wrinkle-free method? Nah, not all the time, but most of the time. But if it does wrinkle, I just go with it. To me, it's just like, all right, it's part of the ambiance of what it is, right? Like this and as you can see I have the smooth operator at like an angle because I want to make sure that it is actually coming down and not tearing the edges of my paper so I'm going to take this I need to get more water on here I mean um top coat on here because I just want to get down all the way through there so again I'm going to lift it up let it come down to that edge and then I'm going to come back up this way, and I just want to bring it around and let it wrap itself. Let it wrap itself right on that edge, because again, I want this to be continuous. And then I'm going to come down just like this. And I did that, so now we get in the... You can't wait to try this tool, Jill. This tool is the bomb. Yes, it is. And again, the edge. I'm going to do the edge. So now I'm going to get this last part on and then we can start actually painting together, guys. I'm making a mess with this top coat. Are you guys seeing that top coat fly everywhere? Which is fine because I still have to put another coat of paint on here anyway, so it'll all blend its way in. All right, I sprayed that again. You want to use your, do not use a regular spray bottle. You do want to use continuous mist because you want it to be a fine mist. You want it to be controlled. You do not want a ton of water on there. You just want enough to wet it so that it accepts the glue and doesn't wrinkle up. Go over here. I actually missed a little section. Again, I'm going to come on here, come across. Now, I will sometimes go back over it in certain areas, like right here. Just give it a little bit more, and I'm just coming here at an angle again, at an angle, and at an angle. And now it is continuous through there. So, what'll happen is when this actually dries, I will take a razor knife and I will cut right in where all the drawers meet up to make sure that it's actually able to pull out and then do all my other stuff. So, now let's do the top part. Okay, I am going to stand up for this. So the way that I want to do this, I'm hoping you guys can see, maybe I can bring this up just a little bit for this. Let me see here. Can I lift it? Yes. Look at that. I'm going to lift this up just so you guys can see what I'm doing over there. Kind of important for you guys to be able to see what's happening, right? There we go. All right. So I'm going to put this on here. And again, I'm going to get my tools, which is my top coat and my mister and my blue tool but i'm actually going to do the whole top of this with the top coat and the reason being is i haven't really decided how i'm going to lay this yet i think i know but i don't want to chance only part of it going on 
So I'm just gonna, actually, you know, I'm gonna do half of it. I'm gonna do half the back half and then I'll do the rest of it once I figure out how I'm gonna do this. I do know that I don't want it straight on. I tend to put always things to a skew anyways. So that's what I'm gonna continue to do. So what I'm gonna do is I do know that I want it probably like that, kind of crooked. So I'm gonna start by misting this side over here. And now I don't have to do the whole thing because I know for a fact that this is more paper than the area I'm doing, right? Let me grab my tool before I go and do this and get all crazy. All right, so I wanna lift this a little bit. I wanna get my edge all set where I want it to go. All right, now I'm gonna take this, and as you can tell, doing it horizontal, as long as you're not trying to stand in front of a camera, is a lot easier than when you do them vertical. So I'm gonna do it to this side first. I'm gonna bring it down and over. I'll lift this. And again, I'm just using my blue tool, my smooth operator. Every time the sun, I just want to sing Michael Jackson, smooth operator. All right. And now we're going to flip this. I'm going to put some more top coat down. And where did I put that? Over here. I'm going to put it across this whole piece because I've decided I'm ready to just kind of lay it down. All right. I'll put it across the whole top. I'm going to take my piece, I'm going to hold it up, and I'm going to lightly mist it. I'm not soaking it, I'm just lightly misting it. Finessing it over to where I need it to go. Hope you guys can hear me. I hear my, I had my earbuds on tonight so that I knew I was going to wind up having my back to the camera at one point. And I wanted to make sure you guys would still be able to hear everything I'm saying. Hope you guys can hear me. If you can't, please let me know. All right. So now, can you guys see how this overhang is right here? I'm okay with that because when this is all dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to just take that overhang part off. Let me wipe this. You always keep your towels with you guys. I keep shop towels with me at all times because I do a lot of shop towel stuff. Um, a lot of things that I need it for. <laughs> so this is going to overhang and we're going to leave it like this. And now we can go ahead and paint. So let me take this piece. I'm just going to bring it down to the edge and over so that we can start working on the painting piece because that's what we're going to do next. All right, so I'm going to take this. This is the Merlot. I'm going to put it over here. And don't forget, guys, I am going to put the recipes up so that you guys can see how you can make your own if, you run, if we run out of that color that you wanted. So we're going to work with Juniper right now. Look how beautiful that is. Love that green. All right, and then I'm going to grab my brush. Now, I was doing stuff earlier, so my brush is already here. So sometimes when I paint, what I'll do is I'm going to move this just a little bit over here so I can kind of see you guys. There we go. Um, so I'll put them in saran wrap, only if I'm going to be using them the same day. If I'm not going to use them the same day, I do tend to not put them in the saran wrap. I will wash them because I don't want to have them get all yucky. I'm lowering the camera, guys, so you guys can see the whole piece as I'm working on it, not just a portion of it. There we go. So now you guys can see the whole piece. So when you guys come on, hey, Chess, when you guys come on, please say hello. Let me know where you are watching from. I am Cheryl with Gigi Bean Designs, and I am in New Hampshire. I am on three, four different things today. So I just start at the top on this one. I'm going to go right here to this lip. So I'm going to go paint right here to the lip. And as you guys can see, I didn't do anything to my brush or to the water. 
However, if you're taking a new brush, this was already used earlier, so it was wet. If I had a brand new brush, I would be lightly misting it before I use this paint because it does help the paint go on better. So let's go ahead and get this painted and then we'll start doing some blending on that lovely piece over there probably, as long as it dries in time. All right, so I'm gonna come across here. So when you guys are painting and you're painting your piece, your first coat is all, always the ugly coat. That's what we call it, the ugly coat. And it's the ugly coat because you're just laying that base down. You're letting it know where you're going to put that paint, what you're going to do with it, right? And not necessarily is going to be what your final look is going to be. Can you guys see how much paint I have on here? My brush looks loaded, but it's actually just because of earlier. I don't have a ton. You don't need a ton in order to put it on here. I tend to use long strokes um, and go across because I like to have it not kind of bunch up that paint for me, right? A couple of the girls that are on tonight, they're probably like, holy moly, she's doing a solid color. <laughs> I usually uh, blend a lot and I will show you guys how to blend and specifically how to do a grunge blend. I'll be teaching that. I'll be doing that on another video. Um, it's kind of neat to learn. If you always want to get like that color, we can have multiple different colors on a piece, but you're not sure how to get it together. I'm going to teach you guys how to do that using all the, the stuff that we have available at our store. All right. And if you guys don't know, we are a Dixie Bell elite dealer. That means that I carry everything possible that Dixie Bell has. So we have to have everything that they carry. The only thing I don't have a lot of right now with the Dixie Bell is the stencils. Um, and But I've been getting some requests for them, so I'm probably going to start carrying a few of them. And we're going to be carrying all the Grace on Design stencils as well. Um, if you guys haven't checked those out, we'll be doing those on another live too. We're going to keep teaching different things. I'm going to turn this around, guys, so we can get to the front. So they have the Grace on Design stencils. We have the Dixie Bell stencils. We have Grace on Design A1 transfer. So this A1 is, is coming. Have you guys seen these transfers? Where do I have my transfers? Stand by, I'm gonna show you guys the transfers. Ah, uh, or maybe I'm not because I didn't bring them down to my, oh, I did, sorry. Whoa, took you guys for a ride, hold on a second. Took you guys for a long ride. All right. That's what I get for trying to show you guys something. All right. Whew. How's that for a ride? Guys, I got to show you these new transfers that Graceland Design has. And yes, we're going to be carrying these at the store. You guys ready? Look at this one. That's Metamorphosis. Can you tell I'm excited about these? This is the folk art. These are coming in next week. I'm actually going to do a live opening. Um, I'm going to do a live and show you guys. So I open these so the sticks are all kind of like up and about. This, look at this. Peaceful poppies. Look at those, right? Gorgeous. All right, let me get this one up. This right here is probably by far my favorite. It is the, it's hard to believe, but they look like a pitcher. Like they don't look like, that's exactly what they look like right there. Like somebody took a photograph. It's called Remarkable Garden. This is another favorite guys. Uh, next week on my HP Live is I'm gonna be working with this one right here. Look at that. That's fallen to whimsy. Can you guys see how awesome that is? What I love about these two is that they're flat, so they're not rolled up. So you don't have to worry about unrolling them or anything like that. And they have numbers on each of the edges so that you can make sure that they go in order when you put them up. And then we have the last one is Fanciful Guarding. There is one more coming. I haven't gotten it yet. And when it comes in, I'll be showing you guys as well. But, all right, so we carry transfers uh, from Grace on Design. I love, love, love their transfers. We do still carry some of the Dixie Bell transfers. I haven't done a reorder because they haven't really sold that as much. However, they do have some cute transfers there, too. Specifically, my favorite is the Alice in Wonderland one. Whoop, whoop, Alice in Wonderland. So I'm actually going to be doing an Alice in Wonderland themed desk, and I'm going to teach you guys how to make Harlequins with tape. If you guys haven't done that before, it's a lot of fun. 
It's just a way that you make your tape and you put it in an edge to get that Harlequin look. All right. Now I paint with my drawers in, and the reason I paint with my drawers in most of the time um, is because most of the time it's got a design, spe specifically if I'm doing blending, because I want that blend to go all the way across. So I'll paint with my drawers in. I will tell you that we're not going to be blending on this thing, except for where we're blending in the decoupage pack. But I still painting with the drawers in. <laughs> When you guys come on, please say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Again, I'm Cheryl with JJB Designs, and we're just having a little paint fun tonight, decoupaging, kind of just the basics of painting right now. So we clean this really, really well at first. Very important. Prep is everything, everything in your piece. We're using a color from Dixie Belle. It's in their fall line. It's just a limited edition color. It is called Juniper. See how pretty this is? I love this color and I'm using just a soft bristle synthetic brush. It's really important when you use these types of paints that you use a synthetic brush. Every brush has its purpose, right? So the natural hair brushes are really great for when you want to do blending. They're good for when you're doing uh, texture, things like that. But if you want a nice smooth texture, a nice smooth finish, you're going to use synthetic brushes because they're going to give you exactly what you're looking for. Not necessarily. You can't get that look as well unless you're really experienced at it with a natural bristle brush all right so we're gonna go ahead and finish this side let me turn this baby around see if i can get it all the way turned so you guys can see me painting there we go i'm gonna turn this around and get this on this side also, when you're painting, it's really important after you've gotten your coat on, look around for any drips. If you have drips, you're going to want to get them before it dries. If you have drips and you don't see them and it dries, the only way to get those drips away is to sand them. You don't want to have to sand away drips because then you basically have to start over. Nobody wants to do that. Ain't nobody got time for that, right? Again, this is my first coat. There are paints that say that there's a one coat paint, but I'm going to tell you, it's very rarely that you can use one coat. And another thing to remember when you guys are working with paints as well, if it's a white paint or a yellow paint, even some of the purples, they don't cover as well. So you need more coats than you would normally use. There's just not enough pigment in them to cover. So, uh, for example, when I paint with white, I actually, even if this, it doesn't need to be primed, I will prime my piece because I don't want to put on six coats of white and you would have to put a lot of coats of white on, especially if you're going over a darker piece of wood, you definitely would have to do that. So I personally prime every piece that I'm going to be doing in a lighter color, just so that I don't have to worry about using multiple coats. Look how fast that goes on and look how awesome this covers, right? This has great coverage, this paint. We're going to go right on here. I'm gonna always want to get underneath too in these little step areas. This actually, you can see that when they have their, so you want to make sure you get every little, every little detail counts, right? I got a hair right here. All right. And that goes to tell you, if you got a hair or a bristle, don't try and pick it out with your fingers. Try and brush it to an edge if you can. I know sometimes you can't help it, but if you go ahead and you brush it to the edge, it's a less chance that you're going to like gouge into the paint or other things that you're working on. All right. So we've already done the juniper. So I'm actually going to put this aside, put the cover on it, and we're going to get to the latte. I'm loving my latte. This stuff is awesome. Like this. All right. I'm going to, again, I'm going to turn just because, which I just painted underneath there. So it's going to be great. The good thing is it's underneath, so I see my fingerprints. It's not as big of a deal, right? <laughs> so now we're going to do here, and we're going to do the top with the latte. Now, I already stirred these because I was painting with them before I came on with you guys tonight. But if you're going to, when you open up a thing of paint, you're going to want to take one of your stir sticks, a popsicle stick, whatever it is that you choose to stir with, and go ahead and um, stir up your paint. Now this brush has been sitting, do you see how I wrapped it? So it's like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly mist it 
just so I can get that paint off of there and get it nice and smooth again. All right, so I do not want to touch my green with this because I don't want to bring it into the green, into this color. I'm just going to put this up here. This is where we're going to be decoupaging the second one because these are going to be matching. This is going to look just like the other one did before we did the decoupage on it. So we just want to put this in here in this area so that we have a nice base, a nice light base. There we go. I'm going to leave that literally just like that. It looks gross, right? It looks ugly. But you know what's going to happen is once I put the decoupage on, which I just noticed this paper is loosening. Once I put the decoupage on, um, you won't even see that. So now on the top, I'm just going to start on the top. I'm going to come around. I'm going to see underneath the lip here. It's really important to get all the areas. You want all the areas painted. It's the little, little details that really matter. I'm actually going to do this first this time and then get up and do the top. I want to come around. I just want to get to that edge. So I'd love to know, guys. Hey, Elizabeth. I'd love to know in the comments, what are some things that you guys would like to see me teach on here? I, I know that um, I'm already going to be teaching. I always teach decoupage and painting, but I was thinking of teaching you guys all about the gilding waxes or all about the glazes, um, different things like that. Let me know what is something that you guys would love to learn about. Another thing that I plan on doing a whole evening with, because it does take all evening to do, is doing a live with you guys teaching a um teaching how to use the reticket which is the liquid wood kelly the only reason i'm using a different brush is because the one i started with um i can use any brush the oval is nice but i actually love when i'm going on a much more of a flat area to use the dixie bell mini which is right here um you can also use the zebra it's a zebra sash brush i'm sorry if i'm in front of the camera guys i just gotta get this edge you can use the zebra sash brush which actually does exactly the same thing. So Kelly, you want to learn how to distress? We can distress. You want to do some distressing? Maybe one of the videos do a distressing. So make sure you guys tune in here on Sunday. So it's going to be the first and the third Sunday of every month. I'll be on the Junction 71 page as well as JJ Beans and in the creative group, um, creative connection group, so that you guys can learn all the different cool things that we're going to do, right? So what I'm going to do right now is I... I'm going to put these away real quick. I'm going to take a look over here at, you guys can't see it, but I can see it. I'm going to move the camera so you guys can see it over here. I just want to see how well we're drying, where we're at. I want to see, and I'm noticing that I have some bubbles and stuff in here. It just bubbled up on me, and I think it was when I was pulling it. So I'm just going to come over it with my brush. You guys see I have my brush that had the top coat in it. You're welcome, Kelly. It has the top coat in it. I'm just going to go over with the top coat. And then I'm going to actually take my fingers. I told you guys I do a lot of decoupage with my fingers. I do a lot of decoupage with my fingers. And the reason being is sometimes I just feel like I have a lot more control. I actually paint with my fingers, too, if you guys can believe that one. I, uh, I just feel like sometimes with your fingers, you just have a lot more control, right? So this one, I'm actually going to put a lot more on. I was missing some in this edge. We're not going to blend tonight because this is still pretty wet, and I don't want to disturb it while it's still this wet. But tomorrow night... I will be on the HP distribution page and I'll be teaching some of their transfers. Ooh, we're going to have fun with these transfers I showed you guys. All right. So I want to thank everybody for coming on tonight, but I want to go over what we talked about as well. So what we started here is this is the Grace on Design decoupage packs. As you can see, it's still dry and it's still doing its thing. I will actually finish this up when it's just dry and um, probably go live on my page showing you guys how to blend that in. Not sure when, just kind of keep a lookout. I'll probably do a, a little boop. Hey, I'm going to be live on JJ Beans. So that if you guys don't follow me after this video, jump on over to JJ Beans. Make sure you click that follow or like button. 
Um, it's up in the description. All of our Dixie Belle fall colors will be in on Monday. I'll be stocking them. And then I believe it's Tuesday, all the Grace on Design new decoupage stuff that I've ordered in, as well as the transfers, will be in store. What? However, they are available already up in the description as on the website at uh, jjbeans.com. Uh, now, again, any of you guys locally want me to teach you stuff, like I know Kelly wants to do distressing. I've had another person ask me about gilding waxes. When do you use a regular wax and when do you use a gilding wax? What's the differences? I'm going to teach you guys that. I'll teach you guys about the Dixie Belle Mousse. Uh, we'll teach you guys about a lot of the different products that are offered at the store. Retique it, liquid wood. If you guys haven't done liquid wood, it's kind of cool, kind of cool. You literally could take anything. I actually did a video showing how I took a plastic table and made it a wood grain using the Retique it, liquid wood. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And again, if you enjoyed the video, please jump on over to my page. Make sure you follow so you can see all the follow-up videos that I do to this. And I'm here going to be here every first and third Sunday of every month at 6 o'clock same bat channel same bat time and every monday night i am on hp distribution page at uh seven no seven thirty same bat channel same bat time so please tune in and i look forward to teaching you guys some more stuff thanks kelly